Day two, we're getting ready for you. No, Jake Paul is obviously, you know. My family loves Jake Paul. Could you f him up? Oh, I'm so fucking easy. The most unexpected news would be an emotional breakdown for the problem child. And that's exactly what has happened. And I literally had to pay them a lot of fucking money for no reason. And I'm, and I'm like, it just pisses me the fuck off. And then. The problem child, known for his mischief and nonchalance, must have made the wrongest decision by choosing the baddest man on the planet as his next opponent. The baddest man on the planet has been ensuring Jake Paul gets no break from his badness and has induced a breakdown for Paul in the process. It's the most unpredictable event, with many thinking it might be just one of Jake Paul's many antics. Let's get right in. The dispute doesn't look like it is nearing its end yet. Iron Mike Tyson has, again, fired heavier shots at Jake Paul, and this time, the shot has not only put Paul out of place, but has also thrown Paul into an epic breakdown. Day two, we're getting ready for you. Tyson exposed Jake Paul's injuries and called them fake, claiming they've been made up by Paul to cower away from the up-and-coming match. Just how true could this be? Let's dive deeper into it. After a match was announced, between the legendary Iron Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, there has been an uproar in the boxing world. I'm gonna fight Mike Tyson. I mean, the guy is, you know, he's nearly 60, and a um, 26-year-old against a 60-year-old? I don't know, I don't float my boat. From fans to boxing experts, and even the combatants themselves, speculations, arguments, rants, and even threats have been spreading across the air like smoke from a wildfire. The boxing world is already at peace with the fact that the chaos won't die down till a winner is announced. Paul came on live recently with the claims of sustaining a shoulder injury, leaving fans with uncertainty and curiosity on the basis of the match being canceled or postponed. Paul was seen with a hand cast and a lot of bandages to his left arm. This immediately riled up his comment section before the promising boxer could start his statement. I dislodged my shoulder lifting up a gym boulder in one of my spars. It hurts man and the doctor said I can't fight in this state and any scheduled upcoming match may be on possible hiatus. This statement left a lot of fans in disbelief and awe, with some disappointed at the new update, not knowing what to do with the riled up speculations and expectations, while others kept stating that Paul had to prioritize his health and physical wellness. The whole situation was soon dismissed like yesterday's news as the legendary world weight champion came on media to debunk the scenario, stating that it was not only staged, but it was a display of cowardice. This new information caused a rift among supporters and professionals of the sport, as people were disoriented on whose side to take to. Some fans believed Paul was seriously injured and had no reason or point to lie, while others believed Paul reality just dawned on him in respect to who he was facing, the baddest man on the planet as the media was going all in sunder with speculations and accusations on who had spoken the truth or not. A video surfaced online where Paul was seen severely breaking down and airing out his views on the matter. I don't know man, I just hate it, you know? You put yourself out there and others think they could just come at you, basing your speech as lies. This statement gained Jake Paul the pity card victory because as soon as fans heard it, they started going to Mike Tyson's for picking on Jake Paul. Fans even went as far as referring to Iron Mike Tyson as a bully and a demeanor, with trending hashtags and callouts all against the 57-year-old legend. All of these followed shortly after the video of Mike Tyson calling out Jake Paul for faking his injuries resurfaced. In the video, Mike was seen to have spoken relentlessly about Jake and his recent controversial actions, stating them as fake and staged. You see that stunt he pulled on y'all with the cast hooks and bandages? They all bullshit. The kid's just running away from the match with his tails in between his legs. Jake had been making rounds in the media previously with his amazing sparring and workout sessions, and the energetic glint on his eyes could tell he was the most expectant with a lot of gleaming anticipations. In an interview, he even spoke about himself being ecstatic to face one of the legendary boxers to ever grace the planet, saying he saw that as an honor. The probability of him sustaining a devastating shoulder injury that could cost him a match even he had been in anticipation for in such a short span of time is really questionable. Tyson went on to prove his point further by giving instances he saw Jake Paul all well and healthy after he made his recovery video speech. 
G said he was recovering and he was spotted at a bowling game a few days ago using the same hand he displayed on the screen. To you all for bowling. Who does that? A sick person in need of recovery? Nah, he just trying to play dangerous mind games like Pete Dargo. You can't fool me, kid. Come in the ring or run away with a tail in between your legs like a damn coward as you know I don't give no fake punches. Pete Dargo was a promising boxer with a good foot in the boxing world, with an average sheet score of October 7th, 17, with five of those wins won by knockout. His match with Scott Smith, who was on a more solid stance, was termed the most controversial. A wrestler and an American mixed martial artist had a score sheet of 30-18-11, with five of those wins also gotten by knockouts. The Scott in UFC history. The fight is also one of the better knockouts you will see in the sport of MMA. Smith has had four bouts inside UFC, and this knockout is his lone win inside the octagon. You can say Smith is the comeback kid of the world, with this being one of a few comeback wins in his career. It was a back and forth fight, up with a lot of tackles and novice jabs, until Cell landed this left hook to the body of Smith. Smith backed up holding his ribs. While others thought Smith was actually in excruciating pain, spectators and viewers stated Smith was obviously faking an act to catch Pete off guard. If that was Scott's intention, then it played out quite in his favor. Cell then charged Smith who was showing no signs of putting up any more of a fight. Most people who watched this would probably have thought Smith was going to lose the bout, as it seemed victory was not in his grasp. Well, in the sport of MMA, this is just wool. Cell got close, and Smith just put all the pain he was feeling aside and landed a vicious right hand that engulfed Cell's face. Like Joe Rogan stated in the video, if you saw it in a movie, you would go, this is bullseye. After the knockout blow was delivered, Smith immediately collapsed to the ground in pain from the body hit. After this fight, Smith went on to lose his next two UFC fights to Patrick Cote and Ed Herman. Smith is 6-7 since this fight in November of 2006 and is currently on a three-fight losing streak inside Strikeforce. Cell would have four more fights inside the UFC and would go 1-3 in those bouts. Cell had gone 1-4 since the fight and had his first fight in two years this past June, which he won by second round submission. In the viral video, Paul was seen addressing the fact that Iron Mike has had a grudge against him since the match between him and Nate Diaz, after his prediction on the match to end in Diaz's favor didn't come to fruition, but instead favored Jake Paul. He's been giving me comeback bouts since the time I won the match against Diaz. I bet he felt disappointed in the fact that he predicted wrong, the Pauls are capable of anything. Paul stated that Mike Tyson started directing comebacks and callouts at him since the day his prediction went wrong at the Jake Paul vs. Nate Diaz match. The 36-year-old Nate Diaz, who was an up-and-coming boxer in the boxing world, known to have fought just a fight in the boxing world, which he lost to Jake Paul with a score sheet of 0, 1, and Paul with a commendable score sheet of 10, 9 minus 1, with 6 of those wins gotten by knockouts, was to face Nate Diaz the 36-year-old boxer with a loss rate higher than that of his wins. Now this would be a bonus win for Jake, you might say, but the two novices definitely gave each other a hard time. It's no wonder Tyson predicted the outcome in favor of Diaz. Paul faced Diaz in their long-awaited boxing match, winning a unanimous decision after 10 competitive rounds. Diaz, making his pro boxing debut, struck several blows near the end of the third round, briefly leaving Paul wobbly before the bell. The 38-year-old continued his offensive in the fourth round, landing several jabs to the roars of the decidedly pro-Diaz crowd. In the fifth round, however, Diaz appeared exhausted, and Paul jumped on the opportunity. He sent Diaz briefly to the floor with a clean left hook before leveling successive blows to Diaz's head later in the round. Neither fighter scored big in the sixth round, though Diaz was battling puffiness in both eyes. Diaz scored with a combination of punches in the 7th, and both fighters exchanged blows during a particularly eventful 8th round. Jake Paul arrived on a tank ahead of his fight against Nate Diaz. Diaz did plenty of showboating in the ring, taunting Paul at times, and turning his back on him. He also mocked one of Paul's punches in the ninth round, saying it felt like a girl punch. However, Diaz looked like he was moments from being knocked out on several occasions. Even as he scattled toward the crowd and away from Paul, Diaz appeared less and less steady on his feet throughout the later rounds. Even in the 10th and final round, Diaz at times turned away from Paul and put both hands on the top rope and shook his head derisively at Paul. 
The win was Paul's third against a former UFC champion. He beat Tyrone Woodley with a one-punch knockout in December 2021 and Anderson Silva in a unanimous decision last September. Following the fight, both combatants made schedules about possibly running things back in an MMA rematch, but with Paul now set to return to the boxing ring in July, it appears those talks have fallen through, and according to Paul, the blame belongs squarely with Diaz. In the video clip, Jake said that Tyson has a way of getting what he wants anyways, and he made reference to the match he had with the British boxer. He feels he could always get what he wants, troll somebody and make the person look stupid. Such a Tyson thing to do. We have his match with Bruno. He needed the money, he went for it. On the 26th of February, Mike Tyson drove Frank Bruno into the ropes with a vicious series of punches late in the fifth round Saturday night. And the courageous but outclassed Bruno was then saved by referee Richard Steele, who stopped the fight with five seconds left in the round. Bruno had his moment though. For a few seconds, he brought over 2,000 Englishmen in the Pac-9, 200-seat Las Vegas Hilton Center to their feet in a wild and memorable first round. More importantly, by lasting almost five rounds, Bruno proved a couple of things. First, he does not have a fragile jaw. He took Tyson's best shots throughout the fight. Second, Tyson might not be the unbeatable Titan everyone thought he was. Tyson was not sensational on the night, merely very good. He came out, as always, looking for the quick knockout. And for a few seconds, it appeared as if he might break the all-time record for the fastest knockout in heavyweight title fight history, the 55-second knockout James Jeffries pinned on Jack Finnegan in 1900. The champion, fighting for the first time since his first round knockout of Michael Spinks about a year before then, had Bruno on the deck almost before the timekeeper had put down his hammer to start the first round. In Tyson's corner, Bruno caught a short right hand on the jaw and went down. He took a standing eight count from Steele and arose clear-headed. He promptly stung Tyson with a left hook. Tyson, obviously in quest of a quicker victory than his 91-second knockout of Spinks, tore into Bruno. But after the knockdown, he appeared to revert to his old ways. Bruno was successful, however, at tying up Tyson when he missed with right hands, creating a Greco-Roman wrestling match for much of the time. He was also successful at holding the shorter 5-11 Tyson by the back of the neck in the clinches. One of Tyson's new cornermen, Aaron Snowell, chased Steele across the ring after the third round to complain. In the end, Bruno was overwhelmed. Early in the fifth, Tyson landed a couple of short, hard uppercuts in between, and Bruno's nose began to bleed. Bruno landed punches twice to Tyson's ribs, but seconds later, the countdown started. First came a thumping left hook to the jaw that sent Bruno into the ropes near Tyson's corner, and the champion was all over his challenger, measuring his helpless opponent and hitting him like a man hammering a nail on the head. After Bruno had taken four or five powerful blows to the head, Steele stepped in at 255, just as Bruno's trainer Terry Lawless was coming through the ropes. At that, Tyson was on the march to Rocky Marciano, and 49-0 improved to 36-0. At the chaotic post-fight news conference, Tyson indicated 50. Zero could come sooner than anyone expects. I want to fight every two months, he said. Don King, who was acting as Tyson's promoter and manager, even though he has no legal standing with the champion, said Jose Ribalta of Brazil might be next. Moving on, Jake Paul also gave Mike a comeback, which referenced a specific comment made by Tyson in his controversial video. He said he doesn't give no fake punches, then explain the fake knockout punch you gave Shawn Michaels or no. Anyone aware of the least thing about worldwide entertainment will know, Shawn Michaels was under the WWE while Mike was a boxer. However, this was discovered to be a profitable and fun publicity stunt as Tyson had just lost his boxing license because of biting off Evander Holyfield's ear. In order to attract the attention of millions of fans, Vince McMahon saw the opportunity to bring Tyson to WWE. Well, it was nothing new. WWE had always collaborated with various superstar personalities like Muhammad Ali, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and many others to expand their viewership base and boost revenues. Iron Mike was at the peak of his career. However, he was out of boxing since he lost his license. The CEO of WWE saw a chance to bring Tyson in and increase ratings and revenue significantly to a peak. Any WWE and MMA fan will undoubtedly recall the legendary moment when Iron Mike crushed Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 30th. 
The match between Stone Cold Steve Austin and HBK included the baddest man on the planet serving as the special referee. At the time, it appeared like Shawn Michaels would get support from him. But it was obviously not the case, and Shawn Michaels was knocked out by him in the end. What made Mike Tyson enter the ring? According to reports, Iron Mike received a $3.5 million offer from Vince McMahon. Given how significant this was, nobody could miss earning large sums of money. Tyson also took part and made his WWE appearance. Tyson wasn't the only one to profit from this. Notably, WWE was going through a difficult time and its popularity was steadily declining. WWE's ratings increased when Tyson made an appearance and the PPV event is said to have brought in $11 million for them. The fact that Tyson would earn more than $3 million further infuriated the wrestlers since WWE stars allegedly said they could easily draw more money for WWE than him. Given the circumstances surrounding the incident, Mike Tyson's knockout to Shawn Michaels was definitely for viewers stunt as the whole scenario was all a staged act for revenue generation. The bants between the legendary world weight champion and the promising up and coming boxer seems to not be ending anytime soon. And this has divided the boxing world with some picking sides with Paul and others have backed the baddest man on the planet to do what he does best. This obviously has affected the opinions and point of view of the whole scenario with some viewing from the point of view which favors Tyson, while the others viewing from the point of view favoring Jake. There have been some uprising speculations in the media by boxing fans who believe Jake Paul is known to speak the blunt truth and Mike Tyson is just cut out to be a bully. The Jake Paul I've seen in the ring is not someone to cower away from a fight. Look what he did to a renowned Tyrone Woodley. He's capable of even the unexpected. It's no news that Jake Paul faced Tyrone Woodley, the former welterweight champion, with an outstanding score sheet of 27-19-7 in the ring at Ohio, August 29, 2021, where Jake Paul brutally knocked out Tyrone Woodley, dropping the former UFC welterweight champion with an overhand right in the sixth round that sent him directly to the bench. Paul, a YouTube star with more than 20 million subscribers, improved to 5-0-4 KOs as a professional boxer after the bout. Tyrone Woodley and Mike Tyson can't come close to comparison when it comes to experience, stage presence, techniques and skills, which makes any form of comparison insulting to the legendary world weight champion. The way Jake would react being in the ring with Tyrone would be entirely different with Tyson on the ring. That exactly is what stage presence implies. One wouldn't really blame Paul for wanting to fake an injury if that's the case. You don't get to see a former undisputed world heavyweight champion walk up to you, sign an agreement to get in the ring with you all the time. Soid is sure that the lad needs some time to rethink and get it together. It must, however, be taken into consideration that Jake Paul had solidified his stance in the boxing world even further with a new score sheet of September 1st 10 with six of his wins outstandingly won by knockouts. As fans' opinions and speculations are left divided in yearning expectations and anticipations, we wait in hopes for July 20th and most importantly, for a winner to be announced. That's all the boxing world has to offer for now. If you enjoyed watching this video, kindly react by clicking the like button. For more updates on the best news, events, moments, and actions in the world of boxing, ensure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to turn on notifications to be alerted whenever we drop quality contents like this.